Okumiko, let's go through your portfolio review. Thanks for sending these in. First of all, I really like the shot because it makes me feel like I want to be there on that pontoon boat. It looks fantastic. So what we'll do, first of all, is straighten the picture. And it's a little bit crooked. And I, I know this simply because of uh, the way that the, uh, the trees are slightly um, needing to be rotated clockwise. And also, just, the, just from experience, uh, I, I know the way that the lay of the land is that we need to rotate slightly. Now, I'm using Adobe Photoshop, sorry, Lightroom CC. And of course, any editing software will allow for rotation. Okay, so that looks good. Now, another interesting thing, let me accept that, is that whenever we have a situation where an object is going left to right or right to left in the frame, we usually except for artistic purposes, uh, we usually like to have more space in front of the object than behind. Now, this is certainly the case here. You have more space in front of the moving pontoon boat, but the pontoon boat is pretty close to being centered in the frame. That's why we want to crop it out. Uh, sorry, not crop it out, but we want to offer more space in front, far more space. So that's, that's why this crop is probably a little bit more acceptable. Now there are exceptions to this rule. Whenever you have a situation where you're dealing with um, metaphor, uh, dark metaphors or, or emotions of loneliness, despair, um, sadness, grief, loss, then you're going to want to do the opposite where a person or an object or an animal that's moving is going out or looking out of frame. However, this is a very cheerful picture, a very happy shot, having fun on a boat, so that's why we are going to um, have less space back here and more space in front. Okay, we can actually travel with our eye through the picture space, which is great. Okay, so next up, um, I actually want to fine tune my straightening. I want to add even more clockwise rotation. And this is purely by eye. Okay, good. Now, one thing that you can consider is, and this is always the case when we have slight overcast skies or we have uh, cloudy skies, is viewing the sky supporting the picture. Is it telling, is it a part of the, um, the narrative? Is it, is it going to help the overall picture? And often I just say no. You know, this sky up here doesn't really tell uh, much of the story. Now, this is debatable. And a lot of people would say, well, Mark, don't crop out the sky because it shows us the nice uh, way that the, uh, the tops of the trees curve. I agree with you. However, for a more powerful and impactful composition, I often will crop out a sky if it is overcast or if it's cloudy. Okay, take a look. Again, you can disagree with me. It's no problem. Um, it, it, you can go either way. Now, if I'm going to do that, then I'm also going to want to bring up a little bit with regards to the bottom crop because the water is now just a bit too much of an expanse. We don't really need the water down here because it's not really telling much of a story. Also, I absolutely love panoramic shots. So when we crop like this, what we're getting is it's not a pure panoramic at all, but it's it's certainly more panoramic than your normal 4x6. So I feel that this composition is a little bit better. Let's go to the original and let's go to this crop. What do you think? It's certainly simpler and usually simpler compositions work better. Now if you were sort of wanting to classically follow the rule of thirds line, you would probably crop up even further where the um, the bottom horizontal rule of thirds line is going through the boat. Let me show you. So this would be more of a truer panoramic right here. And I would even suggest that this is a very good type of uh, printout if you wanted to frame this photo for your wall because panoramic prints look great framed. So this is, this is what I would say is my favorite crop for this picture. Uh, however, you don't have to do a panoramic. Now, with regards to the white areas in the picture, it's a little hot, so a little bit blown out. So what I would do 
there's a couple ways we can correct that. In any, almost any, any editing software, um, you can actually reduce highlights. So if I just take a look at the white areas here in the front and the bow and, and that woman's shirt, if I reduce the highlights, we get more detail in those blown out white areas. And this is a good thing because we usually don't want pure white anything. Now the problem with doing the reduction in highlights is that it's called a, a global adjustment, meaning all of the areas, this whole picture has the reduction of highlights, but we don't really want that because the rest of the picture is perfectly fine with regards to exposure. So that's why we use selective adjustments. Now, not everybody has access to a brush tool or a selective adjustment. So if you don't have access to this, then just do what's called the global adjustment of reducing the highlights like I just showed you. However, if you do have the ability because you use, say, um, Lightroom or maybe some other apps that allow for this, by the way, um, Lightroom CC will, on the mobile, both Android and iOS, will allow for this if you have a plan. What we're going to do is reset everything uh, to zero, and we're simply going to paint on the reduction of the highlights. So we would go to highlights, reduce them to a certain extent, choose a small size brush, and just paint in the places where the water or the white shirt may be a bit too bright. Okay? So as you can see, there's now detail in the woman's shirt. There's now detail in the um, in the wake of the boat and, and the bow where the uh, bow is pushing against the water. Now this is very effective, especially effective when you use when you're shooting in raw. It's not as effective when you're shooting in JPEG, and that's why I like to encourage people to invest the time in learning about RAW and what it can do for your pictures because RAW capture allows for an incredible amount of correction in highlight areas and in deep shadow areas when you want to make the shadow areas brighter. Okay, now you may, this is, this is certainly debatable, but you may want to bring the highlights down on the canvas up here. This, uh, if so, you could create a new brush, less highlight reduction, smaller brush actually and we could just brush on here and what that does is just makes the uh, a little bit more texture makes the texture pop out on the fabric of the um, the awning okay let's look at the original now let's look at the corrected version okay very subtle changes and maybe you didn't even notice too much however often it's the subtle small changes that make a real difference in photography Okay, so let's get to your next picture. Okay, I'm going to go to a fit here so we can see the image properly. Now reset to your original. I already looked at your pictures beforehand as I was excited about going through your, your work. Now, one thing that I do always have to push myself for to do it's to include cars in my pictures because right now when I'm recording this, it's 2018. And I'll be honest, when I'm photographing cities or locations, I really don't care about modern day, present day cars. What I love are classic cars from maybe the 50s or 60s, 70s even. And so I tend to neglect taking pictures of cars in this present decade because I don't care about them. But this is a mistake because 20 years, 30 years, 40 years from now, I will be regretting not having a collection, having any cars from this, this decade, from this era. When I look at pictures from my grandparents or my parents, I always appreciate saying, oh yeah, this must be a photo from the mid 60s because I know that this, these cars would be from that era. So I always suggest if you have a picture like this that has modern day cars, you could duplicate the shot. Uh, if you have raw, of course, it doesn't matter because uh, you have non-destructive non editing. However, in this particular case, I feel that the cars are not serving the picture at all. So that's why we're going to just crop them out. Because, um, you know, unless they 
tell part of the story, I feel that there's really no reason for them to be there. Now, keep in mind that I also just said that cars are incredibly valuable for a historical reference. And we want to keep them because in the future we'll want to come back and look at those cars for many different reasons. So I would say if you're using J if you shoot in JPEG, make a duplicate photo, edit the duplicate but save the original. Or if you are a raw shooter, well it doesn't matter. Just uh, crop the cars out and then but you'll still have the ability to go back to the cars afterward no problem okay now let's take a look at this picture first of all before we get to any adjustments of light and color and so on the question that I have for you is do you feel that this barn has any value to the shot um, for me it's debatable I don't really feel that the, the, the barn or shed or building really tells much of a story. Now, if I do crop it out, I'm in danger a little bit of, um, you know, losing the, uh, that, that nice line, that, that curve of the top of the trees. However, I kind of like to see a natural picture space instead of just, you know, background of of, um, of buildings. Now also here's a situation where if you feel now that we've turned this into an, a na more of a nature shot are these, lamp post are these lamps totally necessary? Well I would tend to just get rid of them myself. Let's go to the clone the, under the healing brush and we may have to zoom in here make a smaller size brush and you can either use if you're using Lightroom CC you can use clone or heal by the way and uh, sometimes they do the exact same thing and it's it's hard to uh, differentiate okay let's see what we got here okay I'm going to delete that and start again you can delete that by the way by just going over the blue dot and pressing delete on your keyboard Let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's clearly not working. Whenever clone doesn't work, go to heal and vice versa. No. <laughs> okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to give ourselves more space to look at the uh, the area, which I should have done in the first place. And let's go back to clone. We're going to do this again. We can be ge fairly generous with our painting of over the offending area. And one thing that I always tell my students, especially when I'm teaching Lightroom CC, is that the the healing brush tool is will never probably be as good as Photoshop uh, Photoshop's healing tool or even apps like Touch Retouch or Photoshop Fix and it may have something to do with non-destructive editing I'm not sure about that but you see how we have uh, the perimeter lights still there so we have to do it again I have to be even more generous with the edges of my selection here Okay, let's move this down just a bit. Okay, now what we can do is instead of a, a big feather, we can reduce the feathering a little bit. And let's see if that's realistic. Mm, not the best. So in order to fix that, I'm going to just get rid of this little area here. And that might... Uh, might make things look a little bit better. Okay, let's take a look back here. Okay, so that's a quick and easy uh, healing brush with the clone. It's not perfect, and if I, w I would normally spend more time with this by sending this picture to Photoshop. By the way, if you have a Lightroom CC 
photographer's plan that includes Photoshop. If you go to help, you can actually um, uh, get tutorials, uh, Lightroom CC tutorials here if you're stuck with something. And also, one thing that's really cool is that you can add, uh, sorry, you can edit your photo in Photoshop. So just go to file, edit in Photoshop. And that's where I would normally erase that light because, like I said, Lightroom CC's cloning is really not that good. Now, the second question is, what do we do with this lamp post? Well, I would probably, like I said, take it into Photoshop to get rid of that. I know for a fact, because I've done, tried this so many times, that I, I would never be able to erase this within Lightroom CC. It's just not good enough uh, healing brush to be able to do that. Okay? So, let's move on. Now, the next thing is I find that the shadow areas... Um, the shadows are a little bit dark, so let's bring the shadows up. We're going to go to light, we're going to go to shadows, and we're going to give the shadows a little bit more, more um, not, not necessarily brightness, but a little bit more luminosity here. Okay, good. Now, you may want uh, more of an electric blue appearance, so let's go to color. And again, for you or anyone else watching this, you may not have Lightroom CC, but most of these abilities are in most different editing apps. We're going to select blue color and we're going to increase the blue saturation. Now the nice thing about this, it's a, it's a specific color channel that you're adjusting, is that when I increase the saturation of blue, the greens were unaffected. Let me show you the reverse. If I go to no saturation, we have a black and white sky, but the greens are still there. If we jazz up the, the blue to a ridiculous amount, the greens are untouched. So we just move the saturation up just to a point where it, it's just a bit below believability. Okay? Now, I feel that that's good. Um, normally I would say, well, let's reduce a, reduce a little bit of highlights in the, uh, the cloudy area, but I don't think that's necessary. We have good texture there. Finally, I would just, in Photoshop myself, I would just get rid of these uh, little palm um, leaves. Let, let me see if it's possible to do it with uh, the healing brush. Let's try heal. And if it doesn't work, which I actually don't expect it to, then I would simply just take it into Photoshop. Or if I'm using an iPhone or an Android, I would use Touch Retouch app or Photoshop Fix. Okay, let's see what happened. Well, that's actually not a bad job. Okay, so that's decent. Um, I would also be tempted to erase this palm here, mainly because it's not really part of this palm. It lo actually looks like it may be dead. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's about it. I would get rid of this in Photoshop, and otherwise we have a really fun palm-filled picture. And <laughs> what's happening here? This is such a hassle. I'm just going to delete these because uh, it, the, um, the healing brush is very finicky and I, I don't really like it half the time. Okay, so let's get to your next picture. Now, whenever we have a situation where a plant, a person, and an animal, a thing is sort of pointing in a certain direction, we usually want to make sure that anything behind that object is not detracting from the overall picture. For example, the, the visual flow of this shot is from left to right. And we know this because the, the primary positioning of the plant is going in this direction. That means that we usually want to have more space in, in front of the object than behind. Now, this area here is distracting. There's really no value in having that because we want all of our visual attention to be on the plant itself or the flower because it's such a beautiful flower. So that's why you could crop out that little uh, leaf there and that would be acceptable. Some people would be tempted to go all the way and get rid of the leaf altogether. Something like that. 
Now, you may say that's a little bit too tight, and I'd probably agree with you. So definitely, at the least, crop out that little section there. And let's just take a look at the original. Do you see how this is sort of distracting and it draws the viewer's attention away from this area? So that's why we got rid of it. Now your photo has a, a beautiful electric blue and the yellows just pop out. I love the reds. And I'll be honest, this, this is a really, really happy shot. I, I think it's great. It uh, makes me smile and that means that you did a great job. Uh, good work. Okay, so your final picture that you sent to me. Um, this is an interesting scenario because what you're doing is macro work and I will be the first to admit that macro photography is not easy. It's very difficult. Um, what you need to do with this picture, or sorry, the next time you go out shooting, is just be very careful of your focus. Now, I can tell that the picture is not focused properly because of this. Take a look down here. This water droplet has focus, but nothing else does. When we're looking one-to-one, -one, this area down here um, is out of focus. So let's pull back to, to fit. And it's not easy, like I, like I said. So I would say don't be discouraged about this picture. Just go out again and make sure you use a tripod and try various um, focus places or locations. For example, you could try focusing on here, on here, and uh, <clears throat> just give yourself uh, uh, lots of time to practice. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting shot. I would just say be very careful of your focus area because this is your focus area in this particular shot. Okay, Kumiko, uh, I enjoyed going through your pictures. Thank you so much for uh, submitting them, and I hope you got a lot out of this review.